Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Hit the Deck. Today we Hit have the deck. Today we have Mr. Snot Factory, who sounds distinctly Hello. Like Snot Factory less. Yeah, I'm I, I'm still recovering. I'm on the tail end of that cold, but I am getting rid of it. So, uh, so I can actually sleep now, which is a wonderful thing. You heard it here first, folks. Disinfect your Ethernet cables, or you will catch the vagermitis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm being accused of infecting like six <laughs> people right now. Yeah, I so, see Lurium says that you've infected her. Yes, it, it has nothing to do with the fact that she actually went outside and went to Walmart, where there's lots of really grody people that can actually get in contact with her. Where infections no, die? It, yes. Uh, no, that's where they go to live. Um, yeah. It's, I don't know. So this evening we had a, a a brief brainstorm five minutes before the stream started, as always. <laughs> <laughs> so we we've kind of decided that we would like to go over a little bit of how to build a deck effectively. Um, cover things like um, what makes a good deck, what makes a bad deck, you know that that kind of stuff and things, right, Vagram? Yeah, that was, that was exactly. Kind of you know, I, I have so many impulses. Well, I could end that sentence there. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, when it comes to magic, I have so many impulses regarding making a deck. Okay, you know, you pick a color or you pick two colors. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to get all the amazing stuff of these colors. And, oh, I have a 97 card deck. Okay, yeah. I need to trim it down. And that's where your brain overloads. So I figure m maybe we could, you know, do, do some instruction on picking a mechanic or a theme or, a, you know, a hero like maybe there's this one or two card combo that you really like. Yeah, we could do uh, that. Yeah. Okay. So let's hop into El Dick Bilderio. So thinking about it, probably the easiest two would be either white or green. Um I kind of think because of the mana elves, I think green is the the best starter symbol. Yeah, let's start with green. We can always sort of work from there. So right. we're going to try and make this as budget friendly as we can. <laughs> it may not work very well, but we'll give it a try. And we'll kind of go from there. So the interesting thing about green is it kind of has two, two ways that it can go right now because of primarily Ixalan. And right. That is, you can either go with your sort of weenie-esque merfolk, or you can go super heavy on like the top end, big stompy giant creatures. Like dinosaurs, for example. Yes. Um, the trouble with that is a lot of those big stompy giant creatures are either rare or mythic to be yes. efficient or they are just horrendously overpriced so I'm expecting that we're either going to have to use a limited number of the fancy rare mythic ones yeah, more than and then more. and then supplement it with something else or we just make a, a ramp green weenie deck Go wide, you know? That's definitely something we can do. So, talking of ramp, you can't really ramp without everyone's favourite elf. Yes. Um, I would be surprised if there is a green deck that is not, like, super aggro heavy because it's been combined with red that does not run Llanowar Elves. I, I, can't, now, I cannot think of a single deck that doesn't run land or else that's also in green and isn't like super aggressive. <laughs> I have to admit, if I'm making a green deck, the very first thing I do is four land or else and then I move on. Yeah. So you have full play sets of land or else from three different editions, right? Yes. This means we could have 12 of them in the deck. Isn't that how that works? No. So, damn. In Magic the Gathering, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we should probably go over those basics first. That's a fair <laughs> point. So, in Constructed Magic the Gathering, the rules for deck building are you must have at least 60 cards, 
although there is no stated maximum. Um, in Arena, the actual maximum is 255 cards. In actual paper, the limit is somewhat more arbitrary. And it, in the rules, it's effectively stated as you must be able to comfortably shuffle the deck in a reasonable time frame. Yeah. Uh, which is a little bit ambiguous. So, um, However, there was a card printed back in, in the days of yore where uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you had at least 200 cards in your library, you won the game automatically. So, <laughs> you know, decks that mm. big did exist. And did things I, bet, like I bet that's or, not in the current format. No, it's not. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but I mean... Um, formats like commander or 100 card decks so that you know 60 is sort of the minimum but it kind of goes up from there um yeah when it comes to the current meta the current meta is very um ag aggro focused um especially with the advent of the new red deck wins which is utterly horrible and nobody should ever play it <laughs> so uh, a lot of decks can't afford to go much higher than 60 cards. I, I think 61 is probably the highest I've seen a deck that still works consistently. Um, so I know that the temptation is to go, you know, 80 cards, 100 cards, just to like beat that occasional mill deck that you'll find. Um, but when you come up against like a really fast tuned aggro deck, you are just going to get annihilated because you don't have the ability to draw the answers that you need on a consistent basis. Right. A lot of people think about decks in terms of numbers. Yeah. Uh, they, they think are. about they think about the the mana and then everything else. Yeah. It, and it's like, how many shiny things can I fit in this deck? Oh, I have like seventy cards that I want to fit in here. Okay, just throw them all in. Yeah. And and yeah, they they basically work from the perspective of. Um. Okay, I have I have uh, the right percentage of mana. We're doing them percentages, and then to to balance out all the other stuff and the costs that I have. But the problem becomes: the larger your total deck count is for cards, the less likely you are to draw any answer for any given situation at any given moment. Exactly. So if you're working on a if you're working on an eighty card deck. Yes, you might have four plummets in that deck, if, since we're looking at green, but the percentage is lower that you're going to draw one of those four when in comparison to a 60-card deck. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the key that, that, that Trunks is talking about, where, yes, you can fit way more shiny things in the deck, but it's harder to get the answers you need for a given situation. Yeah, it's harder and, to find the specific shiny thing that you need to win right now. Yes, yeah, the deeper the toolbox, the more tools there are in it. <laughs> yes, but also the harder it is to find the tool you need. Yeah. Um, so, the other, okay. The other interesting thing to note now um, with the, the most recent patch is that ranked is now either best of one or best of three. Yes. And those two game modes require completely different mindsets to build around. Yes. Um. I can. I've not played either yet, but I can almost guarantee that best of one will be aggro focused, and best of three will be control and mid range focused. That's yeah. kind of where the split will be. So if you want to play an aggro deck, best of one is probably where you want to sit because those games are going to be fast and furious. If you want to play a more controlling or mid range game, then best of three is probably where you're going to find more success. Uh, especially for mid range, because mid range really shines after it has the opportunity to sideboard. Uh, best of three, for the record, um, you play either two or three games, depending on who wins. And in between each game, you can use cards in your sideboard, which is this little section here, um, to replace cards from your main board, which is what a lot of people will refer to this initial 60 cards as. So if you build your sideboard correctly, you can counter a lot of the threats that you will find in other specific decks. Um, like everyone's favourite deck, Turbo Fog, you could side in some <laughs> counter spells to get rid of their, their uh, Nexus of Fates. Or, yeah. you know, you could throw in a Bane Fire to just burn them to death. You know, things like that. When now... Uh, uh, we're going to have to do a whole stream on sideboards. Yeah. At some point. 
I have to remember sideboard. how to sideboard as well. <laughs> yeah, so sideboards are complicated. Yeah. It's not just, oh, I'm just going to slide these cards in and go from 60 to 75. No, that's not how it works. Yeah, sideboarding is a, so. is an art. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, yeah. there are no like hard and fast rules in sideboarding either, so it, it's kind of more of a, here's some general guidelines. Go play with them and find out what works for you. Um, is there any other... Oh, um, a constructed deck cannot contain more than four copies of a single card by its standard English name. So despite the fact that I have three different um, editions of Llanowar Elves, because they're all called Llanowar Elves in English, I can only have four of them. I could, however, Ooh. if I wanted to, have one from each and two of the fancy ones you know yeah i can have any combination of that four but i cannot have more than four um, yeah there are currently two exceptions to that rule um in the oh. arena. um one of them is rat colony because <laughs> rat colony specifically says on the card a deck can have any number of cards named rat colony uh -huh. So in Magic, the specific deck text, the card text, always takes precedent over um, general rulebook text. So that is how Rat Colony gets away with it. The other one is uh, Persistent... Yes. Persistent Petitioners. It also includes the phrase, a deck can have any number of cards named Persistent Petitioners. So we have rat rats and we have mill rats. Those are currently the only two exceptions to that rule in, in Arena. So we've got the basics. We've got some ideas about numbers. We're going to be playing with a 60 card deck, only green. And we've already started by putting some good mana support in with yeah. our Land of War Elves. Land of War Elves. Everyone loves the Land of War Elves. Exactly. So do you want to do more mana ramp and just get lots of critters? Go wide, as they say. Have lots of things on the board, a nice wide line of things to attack with. Or do you want to ramp up to the bigger critters and we can have a select number of those in there? I Which think, way you want to lean today? I think we go classic green and just go big and stompy. Okay, okay. So we're going to be looking primarily early game will be get as much mana on the table as we can either in form of lands or um, mana dorks which is where things like Drew the Cowl will come in useful because these guys also have green mana um, And they're more defensible And they are, yes, exceptionally more defensible. So these, these can beat out um, an early aggro start as well um, like if you're facing a, a white weenie deck who's like turn one and turn two plays are generally going to be like one ones, two ones, one twos um, Druid yep. of the Cowl can safely defend you against those which is always nice other things we could I mean we could look at Elfheim Druids but it, that largely depends on how many um, kicking kick, kicker I think is the actual terminology kicker spells we have yeah. Um, which in mono green, we're probably only going to be running two in terms of Girl from Ashes and possibly Untamed Kafu. It's the only one so that's, I can think of off the top of my head. So that second ability it has isn't going to be getting tapped a lot. Yeah. So it's effectively a, a more expensive Llanowar Elf that doesn't have any power. What about the new scalable land of war elves uh, from simic Bation Druids? yeah are they rare they are rare yeah ah uh, that's the the unfortunate part of them uh H -E where are you in commission oh there you are yes um so yeah this is um the shiny new mana elf that came out with ravnica allegiance um, it is a Simic card. It has the Adapt mechanic, um, which, for those of you that are not aware of Adapt, um, if a creature has no plus one, plus one counters on it, you basically pay that mana cost, and you can put however many counters is in the number following Adapt. 
Um, Incubation Druid has a neat ability that if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, um, you add three mana of any la any type that your land could control instead of one. So you can do neat tricks with this, like um, combine it with something like uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. where is it? Stony Strength, Stony Strength, where are you? Stony Strength, uh, another card that came out in Guilds of Ravnica. Um, the nice thing about this is that it also untaps the creature that you put the counter on, so you could um, use your Incubation Druid to tap for one green mana, to cast Stony Strength, to put a plus one plus one counter on, and untap to then tap for three mana. Mm. So that that's a neat little combo that probably not a lot of people would think of. There's also a blue counter spell that can do similar things um, if you're actually mm. going Simic. Uh, but I think we want to keep things sort of monocolored right now for ease sake. Right. Um, yeah, I do think the incubation druids are good. We probably want to uh, keep it a little bit simpler for now, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think we may come back and do do a version that has like incubation druid over druid of the kill, but for now we'll try and keep it to <clears> a more expensive few. version of this deck. Yeah. So, okay. So. Something that I'm going to include that is maybe a little bit controversial is this Crawl Harpooner. This is a good card. Um, it is a spectacularly good card. Um, one of the reasons that I want to include this is because of uh, White Weenie specifically, and is it Drake's as a secondary? Um, White Weenie will typically run either Skymarch Aspirants, uh, Healer's Hawks, Rustwing, Dray, uh, Rustwing Falcons, or Pegasus Courser, something along those lines, basically any sort of cheap flyer. And Crawl Harpooner, when it enters battlefield, you can effectively fight one of them and hopefully kill it. Uh, if you don't, you at least then have a 3-2 blocker with reach, which is nothing to sniff at. Um, there are obviously other um, examples of this later on in, in sort of the higher mana costs and things like um, Mammoth Spider and other spider things, but, you know, two mana for a 3-2 is actually spectacularly good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really not something to complain about. Plus you get that whole fight mechanic, which even if you don't have any creatures in your uh, graveyard... Um, to trigger the, the undergrowth buff, you still can make it fight that creature. So, you know, opponent plays turn one healer's hawk, you can turn two, two crawl harpooner, even if your graveyard's completely empty. Yeah, it's still a 3 2 when it comes down yeah. to it. Uh, and a 3 2 is nothing to snap at. Um, I probably don't want four of those because they're, they're situational. Um, but there is a predominance of flyers in the meta right now, so it's useful to have. But you probably don't want too many of them. Yeah. So, another choice that we could make at this point is to include the Explore Package, which would take up 12 of our 60 slots. Um, and would run Marfolk Branchwalker. Um, oh, actually, it would only include 8 if we're not doing rares. Um, so Merfolk Branchwalker and Wild Growth Walker. Uh, this dude. So the idea is the, the Branchwalker comes in and explores, and Wild Growth Walker gets counters, and you gain life off the back of it. Ooh, which is oh. super useful, to be honest. Uh, that's a good. That's a good counter. Yeah. I, I mean, a good uh, assist setup. Yeah. I think given the predominance of red deck that life gain is actually going to be super strong right now cool um effectively the way to beat red deck wins is to gain any life at all <laughs> because red deck wins is tuned very much around getting your opponent from 20 to zero in four turns or five turns yeah. on the outlier so if you can gain any life at any point within those first like four or five turns, you're probably going to throw them off and be able to stabilize, recover, and kill them because they just run out of juice okay. far too quickly after that. So you can see, yeah, I'm already. At I've not used cards. Wild Growth Walker before. That's a cool card. It is a really cool card. Um, a lot of people are kind of fed up seeing Wild Growth Walker because it is in literally every deck that runs green right now. 
<laughs> the the explore package is a very core part of um, Golgari midrange right now as well, which is uh, still a really strong deck. And even things like um, Sultai midrange, which is uh, black, green, blue, um, which splashes for uh, Hydro Crasis, the everyone's favorite jellyfish jellyfish Hydro beasts. Yes. Um, they still revolve around this whole explore package as well, but the explore package is fairly ubiquitous right now. Cool. So we'll throw that in. It, it, it'll do work for us. Our next main choice is probably going to be around do we want more ramp or not? And if we do, what form do we want that ramp to take? Because we've got things like Grove from Ashes, um, which we can kick and it will give us two land cards. There are there's things like Circuitous Root as well, which is one mana more, but gives us basic land or gates if we wanted to include a sort of subtle gate sub theme, which I don't really know why we would because we're only running one color. But you know maybe we want to run everyone's favorite sheep and, and put some gate breaker rams in. True. True. You know. Um, my preference is probably from Growth for Ashes because you can still cast it on turn three and just get one land. But if you happen to draw it later on, you can steal two. I think that Grow from the Ashes is going to be probably a bit better for us right now. I would lean towards Gatebreaker Ram and going that route if we were doing. I mean, we could do some guild gates, but it seems silly to put them in if we're only running one color. Yeah, it, it seems like we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot just to have that synergy <laughs> yeah that gimmick yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll throw some grow from in there so we're up to 46 cards now so we're probably going to want to start looking towards uh, a sort of higher end um at yeah. this stage the more expensive the more uh costly yeah uh to cast so we can look at things like uh Bailoth gorger which serves a dual purpose in the fact that it has a kicker we can either play it as um, a 4-4 four, for four, 4, which is pretty good, or we can play it as a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. Hmm. 7-7 seven, seven for 6, even. No, for 8. My bad. Yes, I, can't I was math. about to say. <laughs> it's okay, math is hard. Math is hard. Math is for blockers. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so we could go down the whole bail off Gorger route. We could also just like go straight up to like complete top end and look at things like uh, Trollbred Guardians we've got Thunder Thornhard Wolves we've got Steve the Colossal Dreadmore we've got Vigor Spore Worm we've got Primordial Worm oh we've got Grun uh, I, I kind of think uh, oh Grun the Lonely King what? yeah if it was kicked five so you kick him to make him a 10-10 yeah Wow. And whenever he attacks alone, you double his power and toughness. Uh, it's kind of nuts. Yeah. It's, it's a super gimmicky, though. True. Um, when I think green, I think big, and I think trample. Yes. I mean, there's a like Wrecking Beast. We've got uh, Siege Worm, Ghost Bark Twins. Uh, Actually, Thorn Wrecking Isle. Beast is pretty. Uh, Wrecking Beast is pretty nasty because it you can get it in and haste it. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. So that, that's that's pretty mean right there. It is pricey at seven mana, and two of them have to be green. But I mean, we're running a monocolor deck, so the two force thing doesn't doesn't affect. Yeah. Them. Um, Thorn Element has what people like to call Super Trample. Okay. Uh, because it literally just ignores the fact that it's been blocked at all. Weird. So, I mean, we could do something like Thorn Elemental and throw Blanchard Armor on it. Oh, that would be evil. Yes. Yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh-huh. Let's go that route. That sounds nasty. Super trample for the win. I do really like this Wrecking Beast, though. It is a super good card. 
Arboretum Elemental has Hexproof. Ooh. Or we could just go the Ancient Brondon route. But. There's also Biogenic upgrades, actually. No, maybe not a bad idea. There's so many things that we could do in, in, in Mono Green right now. Yeah, lots of good stuff that got added from uh, Ravnica, Allegiance, etc., etc. Um, is there a spider's reach if we wanted to go that route? Um, I, I do think that... Well, actually, we have Crawl Harpooner. That's got reach. We've got at least one thing with reach on it. Yes. But we're only running those as a two of. So do we shove that up to a four of? Just go like this? Or put it two of something bigger that's got reach. Do we have anything? Rubble Slingers at 2 3. Uh, collision. We have. Do, 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 flower, which just gets us land. Infernati Shield Mate is terrible. Uh, incubation, which is pretty terrible too. Uh, Skull Gator. Hmm. I mean, it's a wall that can turn into a standard mob. I I, I do see the merits of Scuttle Gator. But right now, I think the thing we're lacking the most is maybe some mid-range reach. Uh, actually, I think we have a lot of other bases covered between like Thorn Elemental and and stuff like and the Llanowar Elves and Druids of the Cowl. We have some explore mechanics and we have some ways to exploit that explore mechanics. Uh, so, I, uh, I don't know. Oh, we're looking at kooky artifacts. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's maybe like... A uh, okay, here's call. something to bring up. Very simple. Almost everybody has at least two of these things. The Diamond Mare. It does net us life gain, and it's the easiest to manipulate right now since we're running a single color deck. We only have to get one out to get any kind of benefits from it. Just a thought. It's not bad. Idea, I, I, we have other methods for gaining life, but when you're talking about fighting aggro, putting one of those things out... And, you know, getting a little bit here and there. It's going to get targeted quick by murders or lightning strikes or whatever, but. Because it's a creature, but I mean, it's at least something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll slot. <clears throat> you can always come back and. You muted yourself with me. I thought I hit that button. Hi. There you go. Hello. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Apparently, my keybind doesn't work all the time in a. Uh in a discord anymore for some reason uh mine has days where uh, it's like they'll push an update and it'll only work about half the time it's yeah, really weird it's, it's super odd mm, i'm not seeing anything like immediately jumping out as me is like good right now uh yeah not with this particular i mean like there's stuff like the meteor golem for permanent destruction but I mean, technically speaking, there's crushing canopy, which I think will do enchantments or flying creatures. Yeah, so it does. That will solve a lot of our our problems and be a bit more utilitarian, I think. Um, plus, a uh, meteor golem is super expensive, and we already got enough of that. So, the unfortunate thing about um, this specific deck is that. Monocolor decks didn't really get a lot of love in Ravnica Allegiance. Yeah. Um, because the, the whole Ravnica sets tend to focus more on multicolors as opposed to single colors. So we're f 
very limited in the support that we got from them, which is why a lot of these cards are like Ixalan and M19 and Dominaria. There's only a couple. We can give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, Ramp. Uh, do you want to... Uh, well, actually, no. I think that's a... I think that's a rare path of discovery explore mechanics but i think that's either a rare yeah, or a mythic path I can't remember discovery rare. Is a rare yeah okay yeah yeah never mind never mind let's go with what we got and we can upgrade it later if we need to Ramp. Uh... i have mm. no idea what to expect in the uh on rank Q right now. <laughs> oh my god, well, what uh, kind of hand is that? That's weird. Oh look, it's a forest. Three forest. Oh look, it's an elf. Oh no, I can't play Diamond Round on next turn. Oops. Ah, this is Sultai Midrange. Please, thank you. <laughs> so it's a 1 3, it's at least a good blocker. Yeah. Slime fruit? Why would you even do that? Okay, so do we blunt to the armor of the diamond mirror? <laughs> or do we um, just ramp? <clears throat> I. We do have other copies of Blanchard Armor, right? We will get more. Yeah, yeah we have two in hand. Okay. We've got two in our hand as this. We also have one uh, in our hand, so we, you know, theoretically have that win condition. Yeah. Um, I kind of think uh, ramp now because we might not get a chance later yeah but i'm, I'm not, not sure, sure. Ba -ba -ba, we'll get a forest fully enough no I'll, i'm clicking on that game magic thank you <laughs> i think it's quite amusing that we only have two copies of diamond rare we drawn both of them yeah that's what struck me as extremely weird Cow. An elf. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go diamond run. Should have just played diamond before the jurist. Ha! Feel Meh. my horse wrath. <laughs> feel my horse. What? Yeah, you heard me. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. Cool. If you give it a lick, it tastes just like raisins. Exactly. You clearly are a fellow man of culture. <laughs> what kind of culture have we wrought? Oh, death touch. I ran across a deck yesterday, by the way, that I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, really? It was lots of low and mid-range black green stuff. No, it was a low. It was an all black deck. It was lots of low range, low to mid-range kind of black creature cards. But every single creature they put out on the board, and there were a lot of them had death touch it was like a death touch deck it, it, it was super effective he didn't have anything flashy it's just you know all of his lobby stuff killed everything powerful of mine because it yeah. touched it um so we're one mana away from thorn elemental and we're never going to get that one mana because the game hates us Let's just scroll Harpooner. It'll give us two life. It'll keep us alive for a turn. Uh, and if they want to attack with Slime Food next turn, we can kill it. So. You have zero creatures in your graveyard. I know. It's 
so depressing. They're probably going to attack us, just attack with a fairly scorpion though. And hope that we don't block, which we won't. Cast down. No, no cast downs, okay. Interesting choice opponent. Oh no, he's creating a token, guys. <laughs> oh no, look, it's a Lana Ralph, guys. See, I told you. Mm -hmm. Attack with just the pitiless Gorgon. Oh look. Hi guys, Thorn Elemental here. So now they have to decide. They have to decide to attack with the Gorgon again and lure, try and lure us into, like bait us into de getting something death touched, or save it, not attack, and throw it against the Thorn Elemental. Uh, or that. Okay, that could work. Sure, I'll take a line. I'm just gonna get rid of the death touch. <laughs> well. Okay. I think it's time to blanch wood something. Oh, that's daring. <laughs> you have a 15 17 diamond horse. Hey, Kugas, what's going on? My wrath. Arg. Please stop doing that in your turn. It's super <laughs> triggering. Why would you do that? Specifically, to, well, I don't know why he attacked with slime foot, but I see why they attacked with um the token. They wanted to sacrifice it just to ping you. Right? Yeah, I, I get that, but like, why attack with slime foot? It's just gonna bounce off me. And I had mana open. This is kind of nuts. You're swinging with 23 points. <laughs> I know. There goes a mana elf, and there goes a sapperling stomped under the foot of the mighty, under the hoof, I should say, of the mighty diamond mare. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kugus, how you doing, buddy? I don't actually know if I said that already. Vigram, does this deck not seem oddly familiar? The one they're using? Yeah. Pelt Collector's a curveball, but... I mean, it's a Golgari Saperling deck. Gee, I wonder what the Poison Departure's going to block. Man, those make satisfying thoughts. <laughs> Okay, guy, what's your uh, what's your play here? They got somebody's deck and edited it. So to what that, extent? I'm not sure. Based on the number of land he's got out, it looks like he's only running like 22 lands. I, we haven't even seen any hybrid lands. We've ramped at least once, so... 
Mulder Hulk. Mulder Hulk. That's weird. Hi. I'm a 1012. Fight me. Or just, oh. or just take 10. <laughs> they took it to the face. Wow. Cougars. <laughs> oh look, more land. Yeah. The current bane of my existence with this game right now is the fact that their ra their randomization engine is so random it's to the point of being yeah. For card shuffling. It's just detrimental. Um, it's fine. We've drawn almost half of our land. Yep. Meanwhile, the opponent's on six land. Still. If we get anything out of the deck, anything that's not a land, it will be more helpful. Yeah, basically. Except the land around for our good to come. More land. Yeah, we don't need more mana. We need something else. We got some big bombs in there somewhere. We just need to find them. <clears throat> this match is going on way longer than I thought it would. Yeah. Well, look. Our opponent is a man of culture. <laughs> Yep, sack the token, just to ping us for one. Dink. A wild growth walker, okay. Now if we start drawing like our Marathon branch walkers, we can start turning this game around. As long as we don't attack with this diamond mirror, unless it's like actually going to deal lethal damage. We can't afford to swing with anything other than one sapling a turn. Like, he's not going to attack with anything. Oh, look. Yeah. Oh! Hi. Dave here. Uh, yep. Oh, he's that gruel a, mechanic. There's a gorgon now. This is stalemating very quickly. Yeah. It's going to attack with a sapling. And the Gorgon? Why would you do that? Don't, don't attack with a Gorgon. Sack, well, I was about to say sack the Druid of the Cowl, but... Nah, we I... want to kill the Gorgon <clears throat> so that we can safely attack with uh, Dave and <clears throat> Bob. I mean, if you're going to attack, if they're going to attack with the Gorgon, we don't, I don't think they have any flyers. Yeah, I would say Crawl Harpooner on the Gorgon. Yeah. Like, the Gorgon's an actual threat. The, the Sapling's just a minor annoyance at this point. Rhizome Lurcher, eh? 
Hmm. Undergrowth in his battlefield, the number of plus one plus one counters equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. Yeah. yeah he's he's killed more tokens than anything. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Blanchard armor for Dave the Wrecking Beast would be spectacularly good right now. <laughs> or a Marvel Branch Walker. Come on, opponent, do something. We all know you're not going to attack with anything. Oh, look. It's a land. <clears throat> that is going to kill us. Yeah. It probably already has. Mm, so we'd get through for seven, eight if he attacks with Lano Ralph as well. Well, that's pretty much good. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Doesn't really matter how we block there, we were kind of screwed. Yeah. Okay. Um. We that game dragged on a long time. It did. That was a horrendously long game. That Do you want to spectacular? Tw well. Yeah, I was about to say you want to go tweak and then I swing back in on things. I think I think I kind of want to drop a couple of lands. Okay. Um, and I want to throw in uh, where is it? Rabbit bite. a couple of rabbit bites for some uh, pseudo renewal uh, removal even not renewal we already have that in diamond mares <laughs> so like in that game I really have like, would have liked to kill Slimefoot early on but obviously we were sort of relying on either him attacking into us and being an idiot or him blocking and also being an idiot Mm, this is pretty good actually. Yeah, sure, we'll keep this. A Lana Elf would have been even better, but I'll take a Druid. Um, that last match, if we would have gotten the like the last four land cards, three or four, if we would have gotten something other than mana, yeah, we would have been better. We would have been would have been better. Oh look. <laughs> so this is the matchmaking mechanic at work in MTGA, and I still think that card shuffling and matchmaking are the two biggest failings in this game. The two only failings in my eyes, really. Card shuffling is horrible. And uh, the matchmaking... Uh, as soon as I made a white life game deck, I lost track of the number of times that was matched up against either other white decks or white-black decks or white-green decks or white-red decks. It's like they had to have white in it somewhere for me to play it. I meant to hit the so, no attackers button there, but we're just gonna super ramp here. And then drop a wrecking beast and wreck them. <laughs> Hopefully. Question mark, exclamation but, mark, hashtag. But they, but they have a spore crown salad. We're doomed. They, they they have a Yavamaya Shepherd. <laughs> he 
He has fungal infection in his hand. Morat says, Spore, oh, Morat decided to step out of Anthem and join us. What Fran what uh, javelin did you unlock? I'm assuming you hit 12 by this point in time. Oh, didn't. Oh, you monster. Uh, growing graphical right? settings. Hmm. Yeah. I turned off motion blur and depth of field because I hate both of them. Yeah. Depth of field gives me a headache. Have you really never seen a wild ghost walker before, dude? Like, honestly? Really? Really? That is not the card you wanted to play that on. This is where the collision of rabbit bite pays off. <clears throat> Smackety wackety. Planch wood armor. Dun -dun -dun. We still die next turn. Unless you attack and they throw everything to block it. And all this stuff is tapped. Except poison departure. Can't you don't think they're gonna block with It doesn't poison it doesn't tip matter. Target? Even if they block with a poison tip departure, they've got like five damage on the board. Right, but you're aren't you going to attack with fifteen? Uh, yeah, but it's only 12 is going to get through. If he blocks with the poison tipped archer. Yeah, which he will. I mean, if you're going to die anyway, just swing with everything. Yeah. Dave, we miss you. Goodbye, Dave. So, if you were going to pinpoint something that went sideways in that match, uh, what, do you think it's, or do you just think it was a matter of draws and timing? Um. I mean, partially it's the fact that we're trying to play mono green stompy without, like, on any of the stompy elements. Okay. Let's look at the deck, and let's make the upgraded version of it. Let's turn on rares and mythics, and let's see what we want to, like, make a removal here, an addition there, to basically raise the budget. I'm squared, yes, exactly. So, so the yeah. obvious inclusions with the addition of rare mythics is everyone's favorite dinosaur, Galta. Galta? Primal hunger. Everyone's second favorite dinosaur is Carnage Sign. We can also sub out our druids at the cowl for things like uh, incubation druids, if that is a thing that we wanted. If I can ever find incubation druids, there we are. Good luck with that. So we take out the wrecking beasts. We take out the thorn elementals. Carnage Tyrant. We still want four of. Probably drop the blanchard armors and the diamond bears at this point. Right. Um, I'm going to go up to four rabbit bites, and we are probably going to throw in Jade Light Rangers as well. And then we have the full explore package, and so we've got Branch Walkers, we've got Wild Growth Walkers, and we've got Jade Light Rangers. We have Bruh. space for two things. 
more explore path of discovery mm, we could path of discovery that means more land and plus one counters on stuff and or biogenic ooze Uh, we could do Vinemere, we could do ter Territorial Allosaurus. Territorial um, Allosaurus? Well, uh, yeah, well, well, Allosaurus, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's that it's that double AL right there in the middle. We could go for Gigantosaurus. Um, if we, I mean, not a terrible choice either. Um... Hygienic upgrade, aggressive mammoth, even. Multani? Do yeah, let's see. Uh... Carnage Tarrant has hex proof and what? Uh, El Trample. Okay, so Carnage Tarrant has hex proof and trample. Yeah, it's trample. Galta. Tramp it's tramp proof. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so Galta's got trample. So we've got some big things with trample. Yes. Um, you could pick something. You could, you could pick something utility. What was the bi the biogenic ooze? Is no, that the no, one that no, makes no, duplicate no, okay. tokens with them? Found, found our... Oh, pain bacon. <laughs> Need a side of pain bacon with all this stumpy stumpy. I'm tempted to cut the crawl harpooners just to run four pain bacons. <laughs> I'm. I mean, if we can, they might have flyers. If we can kill them even quicker, then you know. I like the Raptor that duplicates itself. The Polyraptor, yes, it's a good card. Polyraptor is a good card. <coughs> it's it's somewhat gimmicky though. Uh, I, it's it's an awesome card. It is hilarious jank in in even the best of hands, but it is a, a good card. Let's let's run like this. Let's run ramp squared as it is. We can always come back and tweak. Ramp cubed. Ramp cubed. Yeah. We can go to ramp cubed here. Yeah. Um. Cubed. Yeah, Polyraptor is kind of like a um, mirror march or yeah. other cards like that. It's like it 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 brings out the absolute maniacal worst of people in terms of building decks. They want to make some really janky ass combo. It seems like people don't just use them for normal things. Yeah, a lot of people seem to see uh, Polyraptor and go, hmm, can I break the game yeah. using this card? <laughs> yes. Nobody thinks of it as just a normal dinosaur with a gimmick. They say it's a gimmick that happens to be on a dinosaur. Brings out the mad scientist in everybody. You played a forest, how revolutionary. I know, right? It's a forest. <gasps> <laughs> I'm hoping we draw a... a, a, a oh, fuck. No. Oh, mono red. Yeah, we're, we're doing this. What are the odds that it's actually gruel and it's red green? It's not gruel. It's definitely not gruel. Why would you not do that before the attack? Oh. <laughs> Triggered. Oh, okay, you could. Yeah, I was about to say. Grow from ashes. Let's get more land out. Like that, yes. Jesus, red deck players that don't know how to play red deck. <sighs> Deep breath, trunks. Just, just because he copied and pasted it from somebody else's, somebody else's uh, account doesn't mean he knows how to play it. It's okay. Uh, true. It's fine. He's stuck on two land, and we're about to pop Garnish Tyrant. Oh no, it's an electrostatic field. Whatever shall I do? Oh wait, I know what I'm gonna do. Hi. More forest? Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant. Katanka. Suck on that <clears throat> red deck player. 
I do kind of wish we had Blanchwood armor to stick on it, just to really that add insult cool to injury. Anyways. But yeah, <clears throat> Blanchwood Carnage Tyrant. Shino Pyromancer. Okay. Come on, blocky block. It's only gonna get worse. Look, there's a second one. Hi guys, Mono Green here. <laughs> now, okay, remind me. Is it Goblin Chain Whirler is the red card that comes in and does one point of damage to, or some damage to everything, or just opponent things? Uh, it's opponent things. Okay, so if he used Goblin Chain Whirler, it would hit the Carnage Tyrant, yes. but he could not do anything directly. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like those Carnage Tyrants. They're just really good cards. Apparently our opponent did not appreciate the Carnage Tyrants. <laughs> Uh, they don't love them as much as we do. Uh, yeah, I think that I'm not sure I'm ready to count that as a victory because I think that person was kind of incompetent. A uh, little bit, yeah. A little bit of derp in there. Like wasting a shot. Uh oh. Though. Hot Teferi on Teferi action. It's me. We're gonna AKA spend Tommy. <laughs> yes, we're gonna spend the next. Uh... Uh, two hours phasing things in and out of existence with each other. So. Let's slow things down. I want you to build a, the best Turbo Fog deck you can, and then I'm going to copy it, and we'll play head to head and see how long we could make the match draw out. Oh, God. <laughs> the opponent is probably playing Esper Control. I am a freaking genius. Take zero. <laughs> what? Take zero. <laughs> it's like you swing so hard, you just miss him by an inch. The wind on that one. Opponent is 100% playing Esper Control. How do you know this? It's just two colors. It's three colors. Blue, white, and black. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it is black, white. That was... <laughs> Love that noise. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could hear it, but I can't. So your options are mortify, seal away. Come seal away. Come seal away. Come seal away with me. The reason I'm separating these two rabbit bites, in case anyone's wondering, is because this one has been revealed through the uh, Jade Light Rangers Explorer. So the opponent uh, will always be able to see this. Which means I want to be able to play this one first and keep this one hidden. Oh look. Three Rabbit Bites against a deck that doesn't run any creatures. <laughs> He's about to mortify something. Senor, take seven. Hashtag called it. Oh God! Ah. Hey, look, pain bacon. Yeah, we can't play it, and by the time we can play it, uh oh, we're in trouble. Is that there? Yeah, that is. There. Okay. Uh, so we have what six, seven mana. We need one more, and we can play some pain bacon. Holy fuck sticks! Pain Bacon! Ooh, I have to look at this card. Ill-gotten Inheritance. The beginning of your upkeep, a gotten Inheritance deals one damage to each opponent. And you gain one life! Oh my god. Yeah. He's gonna kill Pain Bacon right now. <laughs> he could deal eight damage by sacrificing both of those. What the heck was that? Uh, Kayaya's Wrath. Kayaya. Okay. There is like no way we can race this fast enough. Oh god. Oh god. You know what? 
It just got so much worse. You know what? He's not done yet. Absorb. Oh, okay. You're supposed to save that card for after you ult the fairy. <laughs> that is literally useless to me right now because I can't cast it. Oh god. More Ixalan's binding. No time for a break. Should have minus three that fairy. What is going on with this deck? Oh, this, I mean, this is the new Esper Control deck. Esper Control? What does that even mean? Uh, Esper is blue, white, black. Oh, uh, okay. I kind of have to hit to Ferry, but if I hit to Ferry, we lose. Now. He's going to Essence Scatter this? No? Okay. Thing is, we have really to keep. Use some... uh, yeah, we've lost. I'm, I'm just gonna concede. This. I really don't. Don't want to sit there and fight it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like I had to annoy people over the, you know, over the course of thirty minutes. Yeah, basically. Uh, do I still have this one? No, I deleted this for control a long time ago. Um, I have seen the. Probably because you had a soul. Uh, I mean, I think I still have Turbo Fog there, so. You know, soul optional. Half a soul? Uh, I, I think Turbo Fog uh, is less soul worthy than S4 Control. The, I mean, the thing is, S4 Control is probably the strongest deck in the meta right now. Really? Yeah. That strong? Uh, it's. It kind of works really well against. The, the aggro decks through all of the the sort of like incidental life gain it has um but it also has like tons of board clears and things to go up against like your your midrangey decks evolving wild eh? why did you not just put basic land in there I think another reason that Esper Control is so strong right now is because it can answer such a wide range of threats and the meta is not stable yet. Oh look, it's a Merfolk deck. <laughs> uh. I've never seen a Merfolk deck with Evolving Wilds though. Definitely a Merfolk deck. What was your first clue? The Deeper Elite. <laughs> <laughs> the Merfolk? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Got a two Carnage Tyrants and a Galta in hand. So next turn we can drop Carnage Tyrant. Forest and Carnage Tyrant? Yeah. And then the turn after that, we can either Galtlaw or Carnage Tyrant again. The thing is, this Marfolk deck's not going wide at all, which I'm slightly concerned about. You've only got one forest right now. I don't know if that's limiting them. Why would you not put that on the Mistbinder? Because the Mistbinder can attack this turn. So, you know how I said we could drop Carnage Tyrant? Yeah. I'm kind of tempted to drop the Jade Light Ranger instead. Uh, uh, yeah, because that would boost up the Wild Growth Walker. Yeah. I think that's I think that's valid. It would make it a three-five, which means we can theoretically run it. Into... Aha! More land. There we go. Cool. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think that was a valid. Yeah. We need 
six, eight mana, we would have seven, damn it. We can't do both at the same time. We can, however, do this. Dun -dun -dun. So he's going to flip that and use that to give that to trample and hit us for 12. Uh, not trample, flying. Flample? <clears throat> nah. Flying Murphuck makes no sense to me. I am a genius. It's almost like I play this deck myself. <laughs> uh... Oh man, that's not a rabbit bite. I really wanted a rabbit bite. Probably he's gonna drop. Yeah, that's what I thought he was gonna do. You really gonna take sixteen and lose both of your folks? Oh, he's got to dive down. I mean, still, you just took sixteen to the face, dude. Like, if you can't kill, oh, you're dead. Really need a rabbit bite. Ah, uh, well. Yay, more golds. So, the only thing that's really missing is lack of things to deal with flyers. But also at the same time, we just drew really badly because we do have six of those in the deck. Yeah. So I don't know that I would make any change with this. It seems to be fairly decent. Um, I'm actually super surprised we lasted so long against Merfolk like that. Yeah. Merfolk can get kind of mean kind of quick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, normally Merfolk wants to go really wide really quickly. Oh, look. Yeah, there Stick seemed to the be devil. kind of a slow escalation. Oh, yeah, there you go. A couple of solutions right there. Oh, look. Marzov Guildgate. If this is the gate's deck, I swear to God. The gate's deck that works? Yeah. Black, white, life. Yeah, black, white, life. Yeah, okay. Hi, Crawl Harpooner here. <laughs> yes, please let me fight that creature. Uh, uh, no, you don't want you don't get to keep that hawk, I'm sorry. Mortify? That was the wrong target for that spell, chum. <laughs> you want life gain? Uh, I will show you life gain. Uh, okay. 
I mean, sure. Yes. Carnage tyrant. Hi. Twelve life here. Oops, I broke it. <laughs> uh, this is where I kind of like uh, crushing canopy over some other solutions like so uh, plummet because the, you could chill, kill a Johnny's welcome with the luminous bonds. Oh, the luminous bonds, yeah. I actually forgot about yeah. the luminous bonds. Yeah. I'm I'm not blocking a one one when you clearly have some form of combat <laughs> trick. But that they have all their mana open and a 1-1 one, one they're swinging with. I'm assuming he has Settle in his hand as well. Think so? Mm, fairly confident. So, oh no, actually no, Settle the Wreckage would kill it because it doesn't target the specific thing, it targets all, whatever. Yeah. Okay, you can't get the, you can't mortify the Carnage Tyrant. What the heck? You just put out a fountain of he renewal he, to sacrifice it for a card draw. He doesn't have settle. No. He's looking for He's an looking. to Carnage Siren? Yep, looking for Settler Cleansing Nova, I guess. Hi, one's here. All the forests. Oh. Such a hard choice. Do you want to pick a forest or a forest? Or a forest. Or a forest. Or a forest. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't see the forest for the forest. Oh, oh no. God. It's a luminous bonds. Yeah, but we can still smack them in the face of the carnage, darn it. And they're still probably dead next turn. I mean, yeah, they don't have any other solutions right now. Mm, the end of the war leader. That's the solution. Sort of. I mean, it will stave things off for a turn. Incubation Druid. <laughs> Could have used you a little while ago. Um, it's still not the worst call, actually, because we can still adapt it into a 3 5. Right. You kind of have to block, mate. Yeah. You still. You too. You still die. Okay. And then we just adapt it right away, or what? Oh. No, I'll adapt to the end of his turn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or not. He's going to swing with that. Hi, incubation druid here. Oh look. More lands. More lands. Let's let's land it up, Trunks. I I don't think we have enough land. I don't think we have. This is where lands. I want to This is where I want to blanch with armor. I swear. <laughs> plus 12 plus 12. Uh -oh. Hi. Pain. Pain bacon. Why would you tap the incubation? Uh, <sighs> fuck you, auto tap. Slow, steady breaths. I didn't know you could turn that off. Literally could have won the game there if it wasn't for that freaking auto down. That is fine. I'm happy trading pain bacon for a Johnny's Pride mate. <clears throat> Especially since we can race the spine the end of faster. Okay, now, yep. we, now we can't. 
Uh, Water uh -oh. Elf is not really going to help me right now, game. Badoink! Cheer for one! Yeah! Badoink! One bit! Uh, yeah, we're pretty dead. Yeah. That's a uh, weird turnaround. Unless we draw pain bacon. Nope, we're for Branch Walker. Uh, three, six, eight. Yeah, we're dead. It was not a good game, sir. <clears throat> so the auto tap went for the incubation druid first before the land. Yeah, it all tap seems to pick the the biggest sources of mana, the biggest biggest single sources of mana first. Yeah, which kind of screwed us. Uh, that's painful. But I, I mean, I think the deck works in in principle. Um, I'm actually tempted to drop Galta in favor of running four Coral Hyperners. You want to try it? I think so. I, I Honestly, I think the Carnage Tyrants are better than Galta. Yeah. I, I mean, hate to say think, that, but... I think Pain Bacon is a better, has a, a more immediate impact than Galta as well. The only problem is that while Galta is expensive, you can make it cheaper. Yeah. Pain Bacon is just expensive. Yeah, I mean, at least Pain Bacon you can literally play it and it has an effect even if it dies. Whereas yeah. Galta you have to play and then let it sit on the table for a turn and hope that nobody kills it. And then you can attack right Spatoon goes popping into saying hi, going back to playing Call of Cthulhu. Hi. Treasure your sanity. Enjoy. Yeah, treasure your sanity. Don't look at any strange books. Also, do yeah. not say the word Hastor three times. Yes, and don't hang out in corners of rooms. Yes. <laughs> if, if you if you can, always stay in round room. Otherwise, good luck. Otherwise, yeah, have fun. We should totally run a Call of Cthulhu campaign and stream it. Um, I know nothing about running the game or playing the game. I have had people talk to me about the game. I got a friend that has always tried to get me into it, but she's maniacal and evil and I don't trust her, so. Marvy? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, yes, but not, not, not for Call of Cthulhu. Uh, this is probably the zombie deck. Yeah. I, I know the sneaky ways of kittens. I do not trust Miss Morby. Uh, <laughs> like it, like it, like in the best way possible. I don't trust her. Uh, I, I still want to do a, a game session for my, uh, pen and paper RPG that I designed because I really like playing it. But the eternal question on running an RPG is, uh, how do we... what do you... What do you put on screen? Yeah. Like, Preacher and Lyrium wanted to play, but they don't have webcams. Um, I may have some maps and artwork for some of it, but I'm not just going to put my face up there the whole time and nothing else. I mean, how do you... It's it's not as easy as people think it is. I mean, you know, if I did just audio and recorded the audio for it, I could see that as being humorous, but... I don't know. Um... It may be worth looking at a um, merchant's campaign. He's doing uh, D D. Yeah. Um, I know that he does some sort of form of visuals. I just can't think of what they are off the top of my head right now. Uh, Crawler Pinner is effectively useless for its ability because the, the stick does not have flyers. This is going to run into Midnight Reaper. Plague White. I glanced at that and saw Plight White. Plight White? I, I don't know why. Plight White. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's upset about its current working standards? What's going on? Yeah. This might be some form of the deck that I was playing. I see it Liliana mana yet? Against. It was, it had Liliana untouched by death, and it yeah. had, I think I remember seeing Stitcher's Supplier, and like most, well over three quarters of the, of the creatures in it had death touch. Um, 
Has Joe said, oh, first of all, hi, has Joe. Um, uh, has Joe says, what about using tabletop simulator? I tabletop simulator is great in theory, but actually trying to interact with it and use it is kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, yes, we could get a kind of a grid going that we could use, and I could probably overlay some graphics for you know mo uh, dungeons or whatever. I have some of that, but uh, there's a lot of like dealing with the height that you're working with of making sure to roll the dice and not knock everything down and the dice have to have travel distance and because the dice have physics it's just it's it's complicated why would you why why would you kill my beautiful wild growth walker <laughs> because it has potential i'll oh, show it potential they're gonna hit you for six next time yeah yeah okay Ironically, this yeah. is the one time where I would actually, like, want more land. <laughs> I, I'm, it might be worth it to go back and look at... I haven't looked at Tabletop Simulator in, like, a year and a half. It might be worth it to go back and see if they've got, uh, like, some settings that are new that where you can lock certain things down or, you know, dice don't knock everything over, but... Yeah. I will also take uh, a rapid bite. Sure, why not? He has a murder in his hand. Good call. It's three in his graveyard. There's still one floating somewhere. Yep. There's probably that guard in his hand. Just block it. You know you want to. Just, just block it. Block it. really not that difficult a decision. It, it's really not. Jesus. Nice. I like how he's milled all of his death barons so far. That's why one of the reasons why I've always been kind of hesitant about doing Stitcher Supplier or similar, you know, mill to the graveyard kind of things. I get that you're supposed to have other things like Liliana Untouched by Death that lets you play from the graveyard. But if you don't get those in a timely fashion, you're getting a whole bunch of your good creatures and putting them in your graveyard and you can't pull them out. It's, it's, I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. Kaboom! It seems like we have a lot of problems with too much land or not enough land yeah i'm wondering if we need to go to like 23 land now but i mean we have all of this explorer and ramp and mana dorks yeah but the game doesn't want us to have it so like i like how we drew everything like up here but none of this stuff below it that was just yeah. insane I kind of wish there was a setting, a mana weave setting for yeah. deck shuffling. You know, maybe that would, I don't know if that would alleviate things. Maybe the randomization would still be too, too weird. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Do you want to uh, uh, revise it again and make it crazier? Make 3.0? Or do you want to I don't know uh, just do, do you want to do something slightly different for the last... Uh, 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, let's just like, different. like, if you were going to, let's say, show off something that you have been messing with that has been working for you, what what of these... You have a deck called... Oh, God. I'm worried. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ooze Ascendancy. What is Oh, God? Oh, it's just red. Yeah. Is this your mono red burn? Yeah. It's not you should be ashamed it's of yourself. Nice. That's why it's called Oh God. It, it was a sequel <laughs> to What Have I Become. Yeah. Uh, do you have something that you want to, you know, show off or mess around with that has been working for you? 
I've been enjoying Esper Mid. I've not really played a lot of other things. Um, we can draw off the new Elf Ball. Um, it's it's got shiny new cards in it. Okay. I mean, it has one shiny new card in it. Oh, it has two, actually. I put I put incubation druids in there, but Elf Balls are usually fun. Um, I know that Noxious made uh, an infinite mana deck. Infinite mana? Yeah. Um, didn't I? Have... Elf Ball, Flag Football version of Blood Bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing you're looking for it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and by a little bit, I mean you know, quite a lot. Deck. Nope, it's not that deck. I still remember when somebody got their life up to I had a match where somebody got their life up to um, I don't know 70 70 something or I mean a 70 something 80 something and uh, they made a 80 80 Eldritch Horror I think it was Ouch. and then get and then gave it trample I can't even remember how they pulled it off I just I was just so shocked by the achievement that I wasn't paying attention to the cards. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, Noxious has it. We're going to do something different, though. You know how we've been looking at Gates deck? Yeah, I have seen one that worked. Yeah, that's what I'm about to... What? There's cards in this that I don't already have? <laughs> yeah, the Gruel Gates. You didn't get any of those. Yeah, I just used the other ones. We got the door ones instead. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're making a hoe door deck. What do we deck in those gates a lot? I don't have four Nezahals yet. I do now. Hold on. Hold on. So apparently this deck, this Gates deck, actually works. Oh look, the background's even... It's yeah. Like, it's like an omen. Uh, oh man. A lot of gates. There Get are there are again. many gates. Yeah. Um. So we could turn one is a guild gate. Turn two forest. Turn and then growth spiral to put in plaza harmony. Yeah, I like. That. We'll keep this. Kuga says I had a friend that had a lich deck long ago. You can still have a Lich deck. Um, there, there is a deck called uh, Rainbow Lich in current standards. It's it's sort of interesting. And sort of weird at the same time. Oh look, it's mono red. <laughs> Steamkin. Oh, I didn't gain life. No, I did that wrong. <laughs> Get to blaze! Opponent is currently looking at our graveyard going, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I, way back in the day, there was a point where equipment first showed up. Like, there was a point where the equipment artifact cards were introduced to the game. Um, and, um... Uh, yeah, they were in Mirrodin and then they weren't around for a little bit. It's like they introduced in Mirrodin and then a couple of other, 
Wait a minute. When was Mirrodin? Mirrodin was before or after? Oh, crap. Before or after? Crap, I need to go. Can't remember. Um. Uh. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sets, 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 what? Did I seriously not have a list of the sets somewhere? Then they made the monster as soon as I was eat. Yes, yes they did. And it was glorious. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. that's the basic core additions. Man, okay, I, I... Man, it's a shame that all of that's about to die. Yeah, equipment wasn't mentioned, wasn't, wasn't, uh, equipment was not created in Mirrodin block. No. I started playing. There was basically the core sets, right? Alpha, beta, whatever. And then there was uh, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends, and then the Dark. And the Dark is where I started playing. Then there was Fallen Empires, Homelands, Ice Age, Alliances, Mirage, Visions, Weatherlight. And then the uh, Wrath Cycle block came up with Tempest, Stronghold, and Exodus. In Weatherlight and Tempest, there were actually equipment, equipment cards. There? Yes, there was. And uh, uh, I think it was some of the first cards I remember seeing that were actually equipment cards. I don't know if it was Weatherlight or Tempest, but I do remember seeing them. Um, and I had a, uh, an artifact deck with a whole bunch of equipment cards that actually kind of worked. It's like it didn't have any color... Co it didn't have any color-centric creatures in it. All the creatures were artifacts, all the, you know... Uh, it actually kind of worked way back in the day, but yeah. Yeah, I think I stopped playing in the Wrath Cycle block. Tempest to Stronghold when I stopped playing. I vaguely remember Slivers at some point around then. Uh, I don't know. I started in Legends and think the last ones I bought were Chronicles. Yeah. that game because burn is burn yeah it's hard to win against burn burn, burn is burning but I mean, we need to do art because visual. oh uh, this is good. Yeah, we'll keep this why not why why not okay <laughs> it's not terrible Wait, did you get the life that way? Yeah, because I had two guild gates. So when it enters the battlefield, if it, you have two or more gates, you uh, gain two Oh, you, you only had a only guild had gate in a normal land. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The first time. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, what, what, what did I miss? Gate breaker ram. Hi, gate breaker ram here. Matt. I'm a 4-4 four, four sheep. Please don't kill my sheep. Leave the a sheep. A fur alone. fur sheep. Leave the sheep. 
they're looking for their murder. Whoop. <laughs> Tender shoot dryad. Well, that's dying. <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh! I just love the effect on that. That and cleansing Nova are glorious. Oh yeah. Not a spore swarm. The important thing is this says and or gate cards. Why are they not probably thinking uh, to kill yeah. Okay, weird. Nice mixture of gates we've got there. Yeah, why, why stick with just one gate when you can have them all, right? Exactly. Gotta catch them all. Oh, that works, right? That's a, that's a thing in magic. Y yes? Yeah. Do you mean of catastrophes? One, two, three, four. Oh, we don't have enough gates. Hmm. For what? To uh, kill Demon of Catastrophes with Gates of Blaze. That is not a land. I kind of think anything called Colossus should be tall enough to actually merit having a reach. <laughs> Just saying. It's one of those weird little lore, but not game mechanic things, you know? It's like, yeah. it's tall enough. I think it should have reach, but... Yeah. Similar to the way that, like, all spiders have a uh, reach. Yeah. I mean, that's a land... Oh, wait. Can we do this? Yeah, we can do this. What the hell are you doing? You're going to double gates of blaze? Yep. You just get a second card, boosh, and then boosh. Wow, it killed everything, but whatever. I needed to get rid of his uh, demon. Yeah, they just passed straight to you. Mm, they may have a handful of lands. True. It seems like they do have a plethora of it. No thanks. Ma. Oh, why not? Wow. An 8-8 eight, eight gate breaker ram and an 8-8 eight, eight gate colossus. Unless they do something impressive, you basically have lethal next turn. Yeah. They need to kill one of our creatures. They do not. They're screwed. They're flooded. They're swimming in mana. Hmm. <laughs> 
No, that, that oh. actually prevents... Oh, no, it doesn't. You can't block it. You can't block the can't gate block Colossus. One. Gate Colossus can't be blocked by creatures power two or less. <laughs> <laughs> he survives on one life. There you go. That is actually a very effective deck. It does work. For for a gate deck? That is actually uh -huh. like super effective. Huh. What an interesting. What an interesting. So it's like a little bit left on the clock. There, what, what do you want to a little bit left on the clock, yeah. Um what have we got? Ten minutes? What can we do in ten minutes? Uh, oh, that's a loaded question. Um, Should we play some jank? Should we play some walls? Let's play some walls. <laughs> walls? High alert walls? Yeah. You made that deck? Uh, no, I 100% I stole off some of it. Uh, I know we talked about it. Getting a whole bunch of walls and defender cards and then using high alert. Yeah, somebody else got there first, so I, I kind of stole yeah. it. Bound to happen. Bound to happen. Yodlaff Peterson? Bet he got teased in high school. Who's Yodlaff Peterson? Who, where, when? Yodlaff, the guy, the opponent's name, Yodlaff Peterson. Oh, Lord. Yeah, like I said, he probably got teased uh, in school. I don't have any land that comes in untapped right now. Do we risk not drawing a land? I'd rather mulligan and be safe. Oh, and we still don't have any land that doesn't come in down. <laughs> I'd rather mulligan and be safe! That's better. Oh, I'll take the lull mist. Sure, why not? Oh no, it's a forest. We are doomed. Look, it's a dog. Don't, don't hurt my dog. Oh, it's a marathon deck. Uh oh. We're in trouble. Something's coming up, and it. I can't it remember like the it. No. It seems, like, it seems like trouble. Something to do with trouble. Yeah. I... <sighs> Yeah. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Something's come along and it's burst our bubble. That's oh, what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Gotta get home. Quick march on the double. A shampoo. Ooh, this is a Simic deck. We're no, doing... it's Merfolk. You declared it Merfolk at the beginning and you're always right. It's a Simic deck, guys. <sighs> Uh, weren't we doomed because it was a merfolk deck? Yeah, we're definitely doomed. It's a merfolk simic deck. It would like we're double doomed. Yes, double, triple, quadruple doomed. Let's just take the adapt four. So you can adapt that and make it a three four. Okay. <laughs> Do you have another one of those? Okay. Arcades the strategist. Uh, I need blue. I need blue. There we go. Hi, Arcades. He's he's a strategy boy. Mmm, strategery. 
Gower playing Lish Rock. Oh look, high alert. The turn after we draw freaking <sighs> Arcades. That's not a particularly helpful game. the cards yeah put a defender on the field we draw a card we get another wall of mist defender put it on the field truck draw a card oh he's funny i like him Why, why would you do that? <laughs> why? I wasn't going to block you anyway. Oh, look, he's going to adapt to your monkeys. No. No, it's a benthic biomancer. Judge, uh, judge, I'd like to object. It seems like my opponent has a better deck than us. That doesn't seem fair. So we take three next turn. Oh, I'll stick for now. Important is out of cards, so he's playing top deck. If we can survive this turn, we can win. Sure, you draw and discard a card. Go for it. Oh look, you drew a land. Okay. Hi. My name's Tetsuko. I'm going to make all of my walls unblockable. I'm like super terrified of what this last card in his hand is. <laughs> Stony strength. You still can't block me. Bye. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that escalated. Okay. When I saw Tetsuko and the tower defense in the hand, I was like, yeah, this, this game's over. Do you guys want to see the new <laughs> rare protection in play? Look. Look. Ta-da! Oh, gems! Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So I, I, I have a full play set of all of the rare cards in this set already. Cool. Um, so now basically anytime I open a pack and there's a rare in it, I get 20 gems instead. Huh. And that's what that's it looks cool. like. Oh, I like that. And if yeah. you open 10, you basically get like all of these like gem cards. It's just kind of insane. It's, it's a little bit sad. Just, just a tad. A bit. Okay. So I think we're going to wrap things up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next week we will probably be looking at some more deck building 101s um, we will probably pick another color um, maybe well, go for something yeah. more complicated like blue or white or blue yeah we could, we could look at blue okay I don't know we'll bounce ideas off each other through the, the, the week but we will be doing some form of, of 
deck building one on one. Put some uh, card draw card draw cards in backwards and accidentally mill ourselves. Never mind. Uh, okay, awesome. I'm I'm super curious. Let's see what we're going to come up with next week. Me too. Um, I I think the staple the staple kind of like you know okay start from the very great you know getting these grandiose schemes for decks is great but sometimes you have to go back to the fundamentals of um the baby steps you know the initial getting the ideas and refining and you know just basic stuff not not the weird combo jank things you know those those seem to work yeah good, but... i mean things like that the whole wall deck is all fine and well but like knowing how to like take a deck from something that is like this pile of hot garbage which sort of works <laughs> but doesn't really to then refine it down into something that works yeah. more often than it doesn't is yeah there, there is a certain art form to that and a way of thinking yeah that hopefully we can start you know broadcasting and spewing out onto <laughs> all of you <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well uh bye everybody Yes, thank you very much for joining us, guys. We will be back next week for another episode of Hit the Deck. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll, we'll be an anthem if anyone wants us. Yes, we'll be we'll be playing <laughs> anthem. Bye for now, guys. <laughs>